Hi everyone, Brian here, and we're fortunate enough today to have an exclusive New Zealand first look at Cora Rise of an Empire. Our supplier was very generous in being able to give us a copy of this early. It's not due out until August. So let's take a look and I'll give you a brief overview of how the game works. So this is the setup. We've got the main board up here with the player board and the chosen city from Greece. You have a choice of eight different cities and I'll get to those shortly. You also have the seven player action cards numbered from zero through to six. Each player starts with a deck of five cards and this is the event deck which will cycle through over nine rounds until the end of the game. The first and last cards are always the same. So you begin with growing populations and end with conquest of the Persians. The other seven cards are determined at random and shuffled in and the remaining cards go back to the box. So let's take a look. So you can see here I've chosen Olympia. Uh, I chose that one to demonstrate here today because that's the one I used when I demoed this game uh, and it's one I'm most familiar with. So each faction comes with a series of particular actions that are unique to them. For example, Olympia can start the game uh, with one extra tax. So if we have a look on the board here. So the game is effectively moving up tracks. You have the citizens, tax, glory and troops tracks. Whenever each one of your tokens makes it to a track that has this shield on it, that means that you get to place your shield of your color, as determined here, on the appropriate achievement. Okay, troops symbol. Once you do that, you get one glory and one tax. Citizens are used to assist you with dice rolls. So each player begins the game with two dice in their color, with a third dice on their player track that can be unlocked once they get their culture up to level four. You begin the game by rolling a dice, and for each dice, you can assign it to an action on your action boards. Now, the action boards, as I said before, are labeled from 0 to 6, and you can place your dice on any action board that is equal to or lower than the number on that die. So, for example, with the 2 that I just rolled, I can place that on 0, 1, or 2, and with the 6, I get to place that anywhere I like. So let's say, for example, I decide to place my six on politics. It says here I may play one politics card from your hand. So let's take a look at the cards now. All right. So the cards come in three different varieties. You have the yellow uh, instant effect cards, the purple persistent ongoing effect card, denoted by the infinity symbol, and the end of game scoring cards in brown. And you can see the points symbol there. So in order to use this card, I would need to have three coins and one of these amphora symbols. Now the way that I can get those, so for example, if I chose action three rather than five, it says I can gain one coin more than your current economy level. My economy level at the moment is one, so I would receive two coins. And then you may buy one of those colored symbols up here, either the amphora, the hoplite, or the, I believe that's a liar, if my asterisk law serves me correctly. Uh, and those are used as resources to purchase these politics cards. So for example, if I wanted to put silver mining into play, I would need three coins and an amphora symbol. I happen to have those here. So I pay my coins, pay my amphora, and I get to put silver mining into play. Now I gain this benefit immediately because it has this little lightning bolt arrow. I gain two tax. So I put that into play and I gain two tax. Now at the beginning of the next round, when I collect my tax, I will now collect four coins. 
and you can see that how that will soon build up over time. Now I mentioned earlier that there are two ways to obtain these resource tokens. One is by purchasing them, which can be quite expensive. The other is through military. So if you get your troops up to say six like this, I can have a look over here and I could say, well, I have six troops. So I can go off to war and see what I come back with. So if, let's say, for example, I needed a hoplite symbol. Because no one's taken these symbols yet, I can start at the top, which are the cheapest. And this one tells me that I need two troops to take this symbol. And when I do, I'm going to lose two troops. So I take the symbol, I lose two troops, but now I get to add that to my resources. And the same is with all the other symbols here. Now, the ones that have the laurel wreath around them uh, represent glory. So each time I take one of those, I can increase my glory. They are, of course, more expensive. I also gain this additional benefit under here. In this case, I would get one coin and one victory point. So the game turns are very clearly labeled here, from A through to G. The turn starts with an event announcement, and that is done by turning the top card. So let's say we're into the second round now. We flip the top card. Supplies from Lydia, which means each player begins with, or doesn't begin, but gets three coins when this card comes into play. Not immediately. Next is tax. So you gain tax appropriate to whatever level your tax token is on, in this case four. So you get four coins. Next, we roll our dice. Mm, pretty miserable rolls, but okay. We place those on our appropriate actions. We then take the actions on our dice, starting from the lowest and moving up to the highest. Now, this game is done in simultaneous rounds, so everyone will be taking their turns at the same time. So all the zeros go, then all the ones and the twos and so on. Once everyone has taken all of their actions, we move to section E next, which is progress. Choose one track, either economy, culture or military, and pay the cost to increase it by one level. Next, we move on to event resolution, and this is where we get to apply the effect of the event card. In this case, each player would now collect their three coins. And then finally, we go to the milestone. This is where we check to see if anyone has unlocked a milestone on their turn. So if, for example, I was on the six point on the troops track, I would be able to unlock that particular achievement. Now, if you drop down below due to spending resources or losing them somehow, you don't lose this achievement. This achievement is locked in once you've got it. So that's safe. All right, and if you have unlocked your achievement, then you get rewarded with your one plus one glory and your plus one tax. Now, each of these symbols up here that I just explained before can only be gained by the first player to achieve each of those goals. So if, for example, I was the first to get troops, that no other player can take that particular symbol. There's another one here for citizens, and the others are dotted around the place, depending on what the action is. For example, if I get my economy up to four, I can take the economy symbol. And additionally, there are philosophy tokens, and these are denoted by these little scroll tokens here. All right, if you have a scroll token, you can check down here at each appropriate phase. You've got C, D, and E, which correspond to these uh, events on the, on the turn track. For example, in the C phase, when I roll the dice and choose my actions, I can spend a scroll to get three citizens. Now citizens can be used to increase my roll. So for example, before I rolled a miserable one, maybe I wanted a four. So I could spend four citizens to increase the dice to a four and take that particular action during that round. The other actions here are I can spend two scrolls to choose any one of the resources from the supply, not from the military area. Or I can, during the E phase, I can spend one scroll to either progress one economy, one culture, or one military appropriately. So basically the game is going up tracks, collecting resources, 
rolling dice to take actions, buying politics cards to increase your abilities, and increasing your culture, economy, or military appropriately. At the end of the game, the person with the highest number of victory points is the winner. And effectively, that's the game in a nutshell. You move around the tracks, gain your victory points. At the end of the ninth round, the winner is determined, and that's the game. So that was Korra, Rise of an Empire. Uh, it looks like a really great game. I really enjoyed playing it when I got a chance to try it at Wellycon. Uh, and I'm looking forward to perhaps adding it to my collection one day once it's released. So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join us next time. Bye for now.